Hey, this is Jeffrey Lewis and The Voltage. We're here from New York City. We're playing live on the radio in Austin, Texas. It's not going out live, but we are playing live. We are live. You listening to this, you're not live. You're somewhere in the future. You haven't, you don't exist yet. You're in the ethereal, ephemeral future that's ro rolling towards us on the backwards rotating universal time gear. We are in the present, rolling towards you in the future. At some point, you're going to get back far enough and we're going to get forward far enough with the broadcast that will coincide in some kind of now. But all I know at the moment is that we are live. You're not yet, but you will be. And by the time you are, we won't be. But We'll meet you somewhere there. Jeffrey Lewis on the voltage. That's Mem on bass, Brent on drums. I'm Jeffrey. We've got machines we invent and learn how to build that can stir the cement for giant holes to be filled with the balance of minerals, liquids, and anthracite through trial and error at a particular Fahrenheit. So why can't there be some kind of mighty machine to fight feelings? They're just feelings. We got blueprints for rockets that defeat gravitation with combustion hydraulics and discrete calculation of where the Carmen line snaps and the sound wave convulses to blast through gaps in the armor of the magnetic pulses like a fist through a screen. So where is this machine to fight feelings? They're just little feelings. In boxes and tubes, we fight the cold and the heat with square numbers and cubes to decisive defeat. Setting digital dials and fractions each can agree on In hot orange spirals or in wintergreen freon Spewing atoms or ice, but where do they have the device To fight feelings, they're just stupid feelings Just as the Grand Coulee Dam merely begun as a dream One day a bike helmet cam grew from the era of steam so maybe some magic time constructions we are not aware of will just pluck through your mind just one more task to take care of can something help fight against this old pathetic condition where i'm somehow defenseless just against words or a vision if they're so big and smart why can't they start making stuff to fight feelings they're just little feelings now that there's lasers and beams let's build amazing machines to fight feelings there's just a few feelings, a few lousy feelings, a few stupid feelings, a few little feelings. Why can't they fight feelings? And this is a song about records, and we're surrounded by uh, shelf upon shelf of CDs here. Sometimes when doing a radio program, it's important to describe what the physical environment is, but since we're being filmed, it's completely useless to add this kind of uh, description. You can see for yourselves. I don't know how it started. I suppose it was about the 10th grade. I had never bought much music. I just listened to whatever was played. But there was classic rock there on the radio, and it was blowing my mind. All the records no one wanted now, so they were easy to find. So I started getting LPs, they only cost a little, and these LPs were all the ones I needed from the 60s with psychedelic art on all the great sleeves, much cooler and much cheaper than the CDs, and that's the way I caught the disease. I caught the disease for LPs. There wasn't any internet, a lot of times you just took a shot. 
pretty soon you figured out which records would be awesome or not. If the year was from the 60s, it was probably good bang for your buck. If the year was from the 80s, it was guaranteed to totally suck. So I started getting LPs. They only cost the legend calls us low fees. Three dollars for this Dylan record, oh yes please. And the cream and Rolling Stones and Arlo Guthrie's. A giant treasure trove was all for pennies. And that's the way I caught the disease. I caught the disease for LPs. By 1994, I had completed all my Zeppelin and Floyd. Zeppelin and Floyd. I had all the early toll, but their later stuff just made me annoyed. Made me annoyed. You realize that the radio just scratches at the top of the dirt. Top of the dirt. When four bucks can buy you after bathing at Baxter's with a lyric insert. So I had a lot of LPs. My friends were mostly clueless. It was just me in an ocean of cheap vinyl like a black sea. I hardly had an income, but it was easy. An awesome world awaited with a cheap key And sometimes in the garbage they were just free And that's the way I caught the disease I caught the disease for LPs And then the 90s ended and I wasn't no teenager no more Teenager no more But I started getting shakes if I was passing in a used record store Used record store I got the finger muscles you develop when you flip through a stack for the LPs and nothing in the world was gonna help me you'd see me quit no sooner than see hell freeze and there was nothing like the thrill of getting lucky I'd be flying five sheets in the breeze cause the world was so washing in LPs and I still had the disease for LPs nowadays that stuff is so expensive I don't bother to try Shoot, and plus everything is priced really high The field is overcrowded It's impossible to get a good fix So I walk right past the records And I flip through all the used compact discs Yeah, nowadays it's mostly CDs No one wants to keep them so there's plenty Folk and punk and private press and rap and indie Bonus tracks and liner notes are just empty As long as I can still make a good discovery I've still got that music on there
But I think that she'll just think I'm annoying, so I won't bring it up. She says that doesn't make any sense. You should just think about your art and your friends and about our relationship. My girlfriend doesn't question the psychology of Charles Manson. What does it say about the human condition? Why are people so receptive to listen? Why is confidence alone such a magnet? And it's unfair the way that some people have it. And they seem to do the things that they want to. We all just get away with all that we can do because it's only sexiness that has any value. And all society just falls by the wayside into the hierarchy of cults and of harems and its genetics to be masters of victims. And does hedonism go with corruption? Why are we drawn to dramas of domination? These are massive, giant, trouble and consuming thoughts that I'm thinking. But I think that she'll just think it's annoying, so I don't bring it up. She says, why are you thinking of him? You should just think about your family and friends and about our relationship. girlfriend doesn't wonder while driving about the emptiness of human existence. How can we make any decision if it's only arbitrary opinions? And why should anyone have a baby create another brain of dissatisfaction if we're only biological robots with a program to just mostly feel anxious except for moments of brief distraction while fulfilling simple functions like eating while being ordered to enjoy reproducing But how can doing what you're told be fulfilling? All is misery or patent delusions To just fill ourselves with comforting nonsense All terrified of seeing it clearly And then dying out with no resolution All tumbling down a mountain to nothing While feeling greedy and mean and unhappy Basically a meaningless fungus Obviously boring and pointless And we'll probably have a baby despite this for someone's confusions Why subject them to a long life of work Or feel horrible if they should die young Or feel horrible if we die and leave them The only happiness is if something's funny But what does funniness even mean? These are massive, giant, troubling burdens Weighing on my thinking But I think that she'll just think it's annoying And I don't want to lose her she says, why are you talking so much? How come you never talk about us? Let's just think quiet and nice thoughts and about our relationship.
sweet Jane. She lost her sparkle, you know she isn't the same. Living on reds, vitamin C, and cocaine. All a friend can say is ain't it a shame. Trucking up to Buffalo, I've been thinking you got to mellow slow. Takes time to pick a place to go. They're gonna kick the door in again I'd like to get some sleep before I travel But if you got a warrant, I guess you're gonna come in Busted down on Bourbon Street Set up like a bowling pin Knocked down, it gets to wearing thin They just won't let you be like to travel get tired of traveling you want to settle down i guess they can't revoke your soul for trying get out of the door light out have a look all around sometimes the lights are shining on me other times i can barely see lately it occurs to me what a long it's been trucking i'm a going home oh oh baby back where i belong back home sit down and patch my bones then get back trucking on
up there. I think that's probably a set. Had a beginning, a middle, and an end, or we could go on. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should go get lunch. What do you think? Yeah, I like lunch. Thumbs up from them on the lunch ID. So, people of the future, people of the past, we're going to meet in the present somewhere, someday, in some dimension. I look forward to it. Enjoy the rest of your time-space continuum.